Hi, it's Miss Jennifer. I'm back to read you another story today. It's another classic fairy tale. I think you're going to like this one. It's called Jack and the Beanstalk. Have you ever heard this story? I hope you enjoy it. Jack and the Beanstalk. Long ago, a poor widow lived in a little cottage with only her son. His name was Jack. They had no furniture except one wooden stool and a rickety table. So Jack and his mother had to sleep on the floor. They had a cow called Queenie Cream who gave them milk every morning, which they carried to market and sold. This was all they had to live on and times were very hard. Then one morning, Queenie Cream produced no milk. Then the next day, no milk. And the day after that, still no milk. A whole week went by with no milk, and therefore they had no money for food. The poor widow saw that the only way to save herself and her little son from starving was to sell the cow. I'm too weak to go myself, Jack. You must take Queenie Cream to market and sell her. Be sure you get a good price. Jack felt quite important as he strode along the country road, leading Queenie Cream by her halter. He enjoyed going to market. It was a beautiful day, and he felt quite the young businessman. Here's a picture of Jack bringing Queenie Cream to market. He hadn't gone very long before he met an old man wearing a tall crown hat. Good morning, Jack, me lad, said the old man, and where are you off to? Good morning to you, sir, said Jack, wondering how the old man knew his name. I'm going to market to sell our cow. Oh, you don't need to take the poor creature all that way, said the old man. She looks worn out already. I'll buy her from you here and now. What's more, I'll give you ten, I repeat, ten of these magic beans for her. Jack looked at the beans in the old man's hand. They did look beautiful, red and shiny and speckled brown. Tell you what, said the old man, seeing that Jack was unsure what to do. To make it fair, let's do it this way. He began counting the beans into Jack's hand. One for you... One for me, one more for you, one more for me, one for you, one for me, another one for you, and one for me. That's five each, and I'll give you another one for luck. Now you've got more than me. So I have, cried Jack, and handed over the cow, convinced he had made a great bargain. Jack whistled happily all the way home. Home already, Jack, said his mother. That was quick. How much did you get for our cow? Look, I got all of these, Jack said, and he laid out the beans on the rickety table. Beans, cried mother. Beans? You sold Queenie Cream for a few beans? Well, there's not even enough here to make bean soup. And she gathered up the beans, and she threw them straight out of the window. No supper for you, my lad, under the table with you, and you go to sleep. So, sad and hungry, Jay la Jack lay on the hard floor and tried to sleep. He was terribly upset because he had disappointed his mother so badly, and he was still confused by the trick the old man had played on him. The next morning, it was strangely dark in the little cottage. Instead of daylight shining through the window, well, Jack could see nothing but a dark green wall. He called to his mother, and they both ran outside to see, hard against their home, a giant green beanstalk, fatter than the broadest oak, towering up and up and up into the clouds. The beans, the magic beans! Beans, cried Jack. Oh, mother, he said, they were magic. And he began straight away to climb the beanstalk. Jack, cried his mother, 
What do you think you're doing? Where are you going off to? To the top, to the top. And soon he was out of sight. There were so many huge leaves and shoots and tendrils that Jack found it an easy climb. The cottage and the fields he knew vanished beneath the clouds, and when he reached the top of the beanstalk, well, it seemed like another world. The topmost branches were enormous and spread out across the clouds like lush meadows sprinkled with star-shaped flowers. And beside a lake shaped like a new moon stood a great castle. Jack, excited by the climb to this secret land in the sky, marched boldly up to the huge castle door. To the side of the door hung a bell pull, but it was too high for Jack to reach. He jumped and he jumped, but he couldn't reach it. As luck would have it, the door suddenly creaked open and an enormous woman, a giantess, with one eye right there in the middle of her forehead, just glared down at him. Have a look at the beanstalk. It's huge. He's going to go all the way to the top. And look at the one-eyed giantess. My goodness, isn't she big? What would you see if you knocked on a door and a great big one-eyed giantess opened it? Jack turned to run. Maybe that's what you would do, too. I think that's what I would do. Jack turned to run, but the giantess grabbed him up by his heel and carried him, dangling upside down straight into the castle kitchen. Ho, 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 she chortled. You shall be my little helper. You shall clean and scrub and do as I say when my husband is out. And when he's home, I must hide you because he doesn't like children except on toast. Then, just as she set Jack to work on a great pile of greasy dishes, probably left over from dinner last night, thump, 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 the whole castle began to shudder with the sound of someone coming. Someone big sounded like someone very, very big. Oh, no, it's my old man, home already, said the giantess. Quick, hide, hide in here. And she bundled Jack into a cupboard right next to the oven. The keyhole was so big, it admitted plenty of air, and Jack could see everything that took place through it. Now, Jack knew that giants were supposed to be big, but not that big. The giant sniffed the air, and then he bellowed, Fee-fi-fo-fum, I smell the breath of a little one. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Oh, how Jack trembled and how Jack shook but he couldn't resist another look. There's someone in this castle, and I want him for my dinner, bellowed the giant. Oh, no, no, dear, said his wife. It's probably a few greasy scraps left from that boy that you ate yesterday. Relax, put your feet up, and I'll get your dinner ready in no time flat. Soon the giant was wiping his chin after eating two boiled sheep and a dozen roast chickens. Then he went for a walk to build up his appetite for tea. The giantess got Jack from the cupboard and set him to work with the dirty dishes and pots and pans. When they heard the giant returning, Jack was put back in the cupboard. When the giant had finished his huge dinner, three little pigs, and a pair of swans. He ordered his wife to bring him his gold so that he might count it before supper time. 
The giantess plunked six heavy sacks on the table and then went off to dig vegetables for her husband's supper. The giant began counting his gold pieces into bags and by and by he fell asleep amongst his gold. He began to snore like thunder. Quietly, Jack uh, crept out of the cupboard, picked up a big bag of gold, and he ran to the beanstalk. He dropped the bag down into the clouds and clambered down the stalk straight after it. Jack's mother heard a great thump, and she rushed into her garden, feeling that Jack maybe had fallen out of the beanstalk. But instead, she found a bag of gold that had dropped out of the sky. Then Jack arrived, sliding down the last few feet of beanstalk, and he danced around the bag of gold. At last, they had something to celebrate. Well, the next day, when his mother went off to market with the gold piece in her pocket, Jack could not resist another climb up the beanstalk. But this time, he dyed his hair black. Again, just as he got to the castle door, the giantess grabbed him and carried him inside. I've just lost a boy like you. My husband must have gobbled him up when I wasn't looking, she said, but you can finish his work. And she set him cleaning a mountain of greasy pots. Well, soon the same terrifying clamber came about. Thump, 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 thump. Quick, my old man's coming. Get into the cupboard and don't make a sound. Oh, how Jack trembled and how Jack shook as the giant bellowed out in his commanding voice. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the breath of a little one. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Oh, no, dear meatballs, said the giantess. You can smell the meatballs I'm boiling for your dinner. Sit down. It's almost ready. Well, here's the picture of the giant sleeping on the table with all of his gold. Well, when he had gobbled up the boiled meatballs and swallowed a bucket of ale, his wife brought him a little brown hen, alive and clucking. Jack, peering through the keyhole, was horrified, fearing the giant would swallow the hen alive, feathers and all. But the giant stood the hen on the table and said, Lay. And instantly, she laid a golden egg. Lay, said the giant again, and she laid another. Lay, he repeated a third time, and a third golden egg lay right there on the table. The giantess took the eggs away, and by and by, the giant fell asleep, with his head on the table. Quietly, quietly, Jack crept from the cupboard toward the snoring giant, picked up the little brown hen, and ran out of the castle and climbed down the beanstalk just as fast as he could possibly go. Well, at first, Jack's mother was disappointed when, instead of a bag of gold, he handed her a brown hen. But not when Jack said, Lay! And out popped a golden egg. Lay, said Jack again, and there on the rickety table lay another golden egg. Well, next day, when his mother went to market to order a few nice, uh, a nice new table, Jack thought he would make one more last trip up the beanstalk. Sounds like he's getting greedy to me. This time, he cut his hair really, really, really short, and again, the one-eyed giantess did not recognize him, and she dragged him into the castle and set him straight to work. My husband can't stop snacking on little boys, she said. When he comes home, we're going to have to hide you somewhere special. Thump, 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 thump. Oh, dear, it's my old man home already. Quick, get in here. And she stuck Jack into the cupboard and she told him not to make a sound and not to move. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the breath of a little one. Be he alive or be he dead. I'll break his bones to make my bread. No, dear, it's your tasty dinner you can smell. You're home early, but I'll have it on the table in no time. I've been looking all over for that little brown hen, and I'm tired, said the giant. I think I'll have a bit of a lie down before dinner. And he stomped through into the bedroom and collapsed onto the vast bed. Jack heard the bed springs groaning under the giant's weight, and then the sound of the most beautiful, 
beautiful music he had ever heard filled the room. Jack opened the wardrobe door very, very slightly and saw in the corner of, a room, of the room a harp made all of gold playing itself. Now here's a picture of Jack running away with the little brown hen, bringing it home to his mom. So the harp, made of gold, was playing itself. No one touched the strings, but they moved as if breathed on by angels. The lovely music soon lulled the giant to sleep, and when his snores were louder than the music, Jack crept out from his hiding place, grabbed the golden harp, and ran just as fast as he could. Master, master, cried the harp, and the giant woke up with a roar. Oh, how Jack trembled and how Jack shook. And over his shoulder, he took one last look. Then he raced to the beanstalk and got there just before the giant could catch him. And he began climbing down. At first, the giant couldn't see him amongst the leaves, but the harp cried out again, Master, Master! And the giant leapt onto the beanstalk, which began to swing wildly under his weight. Have a look at that. That's Jack running away with the harp. Jack slipped and slithered down the stalk as fast as he could with the harp under one arm. And when he got near the bottom, he yelled, Mother! Mother, grab the axe. We have to chop down the beanstalk. So his mother ran with an axe in her hand to the foot of the beanstalk and then screamed as she saw the giant coming out of the clouds. Jack tumbled to the ground, grabbed the axe, and chop, 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 chop until the beanstalk and the giant came crashing down to the earth. Well, when the dust had settled, Jack saw that their cottage lay flattened underneath the giant, who was indeed quite dead. Oh dear, oh dear, cried his mother, wherever shall we live now? Our home is ruined. Never mind, mother, replied Jack. We have enough gold to build a palace. And the golden harp began to play, and Jack and his mother danced around the little brown hen who sat and clucked on a growing pile of golden eggs. That's right. Have a look at her. How did you like that story? What did you think about that big old giant that eats little boys? Are you glad that Jack got away? What would you do if you had a growing pile of golden eggs? You have any ideas what you'd do with it? Well, that'll give you something to think about. Until the next time, I'll see you soon. Thank you for listening.